In this video, we're going to take a look at graphing piecewise functions. Now, piecewise functions, remember, we look at a different expression for our function depending on the value of x, the value that we're going to put in. If we want to graph these, I would start by breaking it up into the expressions that are make it up. So we have f of x, remember, is the same as y. So if I had take the first piece, y equals, and I'm going to take this top part, 2x minus 1. And then for the second part, I have the y again equals x plus 4. Now, notice that these are both linear. So they're linear equations. They're going to be a nice straight line. And they're both in slope-intercept form. So we can go ahead and just start graphing them. As long as I have blue here, I'm just going to go ahead and graph this one. Remember, the y-intercept is the b, which is right here. So we're going to start at 4 on the y-axis. So there's our first point. And then we use the slope, which in this case is 1. So we're going to go up 1 over 1, rise over run. Remember, up 1 over 1, and up 1 over 1, like so. So that'll represent this function right here, or this equation. Then I'm going to take a look at this equation. And again, just start by graphing it. So this one's going to start at negative 1. That's our y-intercept. So we go here to negative 1. And then we're going to use our slope. Remember, slopes rise over run. So if we wanted to, we could put that over 1. And it would be negative 2 over 1. So we could go down 2 to the right one because we took care of the negative by going down and then it's positive 1 going to the right or if we go up that's positive 2 and then 1 to the left is negative so we can go like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and extend this out here a little bit and then same thing in the opposite direction now notice that in the x-axis here we have some overlap and that will be taken care of when we figure out, well, where do we want this particular function, and where do we want this one? Well, it turns out that this one right here, it says when x is less than 2. Now, remember, the x-axis is this one, so let's just forget about this stuff up here for now, and just focus in on this number line right here, that x-axis. Now, right here, x is 0, x is 1, x is 2, x is 3, and so on. So x being 2 is our critical point here that we want to take a look at. So when x is 2, we don't want this one. We want this one when x is less than 2. So that graph is the purple one right here. So at this point, that's the last piece we want. We want right up to it, but we don't want 2. So for that one, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put an open circle there. And that open circle means we want everything right up to that point, but we don't want the x being actually equal to 2. Okay, So we're going to use an open circle right there. Then we can just connect the dots for the remainder of our line for this piece of the function. So going as straight as I can here, that's not too bad. All right, so that's that piece of the function. Now we have when x is greater than or equal to 2. Well, when x is greater than or equal to 2, that's from here over. And we're including the 2 this time. So for this one, what we need to do is we're going to start right here. So I'm going to erase these two points because those two, I don't want those x's. That would be x is 0 and x is 1. But we do want the x's starting there at 2. So we want this one. So this would be a nice filled in circle. And then we extend going in that direction. So that would be a graph for this piecewise function. We can see clearly the two pieces that make it up. OK, then let's take a look at another one here. And for this one, we have actually three pieces to our function. The first one, let's just go ahead and start by breaking it up, is y is equal to x minus 2. OK, so that's this first one. And then we have y equals negative 3. And finally, I forgot to change colors there. That'll be OK, though. We have y equals 
1 half x plus 2. Okay, so in this one we have three pieces. Again, we notice the inequalities right here, which represents the sections that we are going to be using each of the expressions for. Okay, so let's just start again by graphing, and I have purple chosen right now, so let's start with this one. Notice that this one we can kind of help ourselves out a little here. It's x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so when x is greater than or equal to 2, we're going to use this one. I'm going to start at my y-intercept. So the y-intercept is 2, so we're going to go up right here to 2. Then we use our slope, rise over run, so 1 over 2, so up 1 over 2 to the right, up 1, 2 to the right, up 1, 2 to the right, like so. Now, I'm not going to go this way because notice right here, it's x is greater than or equal to 2. Well, this is x is 0, so if I go this way, uh, that's I'm going to get rid of those anyway because this chunk right here, we don't want that. In fact, we just want it to start right here because this is where x is 2. But we'll come back to that in a little bit. Let's take care of these other two sections. Now, this one right here, we have y equals negative 3. Hmm. Well, remember, we could, if you wanted to, we could write that as 0x minus 3. So our y-intercept is negative 3. So we go down here to negative 3. And then our slope is 0. So that would mean we go up 1 over 1 to the right. And, uh, excuse me, we go up 0. Holy cow. We go up 0. We don't go up at all. We go over 1 to the right and over 1 to the right. Or we could go over 1 to the left. Both of those would be a slope of 0. <coughs> okay, so that's that line. Then, this first one. We're going to start at negative 2, and so again, I'm going to go down here, negative 2, and be careful that you don't mix up your lines here. We have a slope of 1, so that's going to take us up 1 over 1, or it's going to take us down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. Okay, so that's this one right here, something like that. Okay, now we have to figure out which pieces of each graph that we want. So let's start with the one right at the top. This is when x is less than or equal to negative 3. Remember, we look at the x-axis right there just as a good old-fashioned number line. And negative 3, 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And we want to include that, so we want this part right here. And, oops, I just erased that part. I didn't want to do that. Holy cow. We want this part going this way but we want to get rid of this point right here that points a part of this line so we'll leave that we'll get rid of this one right here and we'll get rid of that one right there okay so this one is going to start at x being negative 3 and then it's going to extend in this direction connecting the dots right there okay so that's this piece right here that's when x is less than or equal to negative 3 so negative 3, we want going this way. Then we have that next piece, and that is from when x is between negative 3 and 2. But notice we're not including either of those endpoints. So when x is negative 3, this line right here would extend in both directions. But at negative 3, this time, we're going to do that open circle here because we don't want to include negative 3. Negative 3 is included here, not here. Okay, And it wouldn't be a function if it was included in both places. It would fail the vertical line test. Okay, So then we're going to go over to 2. And again, we don't want to include 2. So I'm going to erase that dot that I had there. And I'm going to make that the open circle like we have on the other end of it because we're not including the value 2 so it's an open circle there then the last piece we have right here which is x is greater than or equal to 2 okay so for that part x is 2 is right here so it will be from here we want this part 
So that's going to be a filled in circle here and going extending off to the right like so. Okay, so then this piece is going to get erased out of there because we don't want that part of that particular line because it starts right there because x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so graphing piecewise functions. The keys are to look at each of the individual expressions and look at that as an equation graph that equation and then look at the inequalities to see which portions do we want to have that part being used and so like here x is less than or equal to negative 3 remember this is the x-axis here's x equals negative 3 and we want it going this way for this one right here we have that middle section from negative 3 to 2 Okay, and not including either endpoint, that's where we have the open circles. And then we fill in that circle going this way for that one. I hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your graphing piecewise functions. You can do it.